From FairLakes1.com, this is episode 190 of Inside the FLX. Each week, this podcast brings you exclusive conversations with the people behind the headlines, and this week is no different. We're bringing a two-part episode featuring the two candidates running for mayor in the city of Geneva. Earlier this year, it became clear that Republican Mayor Ron Elcock would not pursue another term leading the city after a narrow victory in 2015. And now the two men facing off for the opportunity to lead City Hall are familiar faces for different reasons. In part one, a conversation with Democrat Steve Valentino. He's a member of City Council currently and has spent more than a decade and a half in public service. Then in part two, we catch up with Mark Pitifer, the unaffiliated non-party Geneva resident is hoping to create a more inclusive dialogue at City Hall. The man who is affectionately referred to as mayor by friends and colleagues could win that title when Election Day comes to pass. Quick heads up, though, for our regular listeners. You're not going to hear from me this episode. That's because these conversations are being pulled from our candidate snapshot series led by FingerLakes1.com reporter Gabriel Petrazio. They are being recorded throughout September and October in the WEOS studios in Geneva. So a big thank you to Greg Cotterill and everyone else at WEOS for making this possible. And a reminder, part two is also live now. So after you're done listening to this half, be sure to check out that one as well. Let's kick off part one with Valentino discussing his leadership in Geneva and what his expectations are being atop the ticket in November. Steve, I'd like to start with you talking about yourself and how you decided to lead the city's Democratic ticket this year for the election cycle as mayor. Great. Um, I think the uh, the challenge for me was 17 years. I started out with uh, City Council Ward 5. And as I was a youngster back in 1996, I'd like to say at least, uh, I, I took a page from my father's book. He was on council in the 80s. And he told me that if I really wanted to make a difference in the city of Geneva, and I really cared that I needed to get out there and, and do something about it. So in 1996, I took uh, the fifth ward seat, held that for four years, and I was raising uh, my two boys at that time with my wife. And it was uh, a challenging period where they were starting to enter their teens. So I took a break and stepped back. And I was uh, in the process of moving, actually, from one end of the town. I used to live on State Street in Fifth Ward. And I moved closer to my parents up on Ridgewood Drive in Greenbrier Circle. And at that time, I was uh, enlisted by the current council to fill a seat that became vacant from a a resident that used to live in the third ward that moved away. So I took upon that task to be appointed to council based on that current council for third ward seat. And I continued to go for re-election three more times successfully. At that point, in this last four-year term, I questioned whether I wanted to continue or not because I had put forth a lot of effort to being involved in the city of Geneva, and I almost felt like it was time for me to kind of step aside and maybe let somebody else take the helm because sometimes we don't have term limits, and sometimes you get to that, that stale point where you're not sure that if there's something else that could take place would be better for that opportunity. Um, to let somebody else come in. But when I found out that seven out of the nine counselors had decided not to run again, I was very concerned. uh, I like where Geneva's going, so I wanted to keep the continuity. I knew I had the experience to pull it off, and I felt comfortable putting my name in the hat that I would run again. When I addressed the Democratic Committee, the Democratic Committee said, how about mayor? I said, there's no position, no seat that I would turn down at this point because I think it's a critical point in Geneva, and I think it's important for somebody that would experience to take that lead position. And so specifically for you, can you talk more uh, closely about your political experience and what inspires you to take this next step forward? In essence, as you said, a higher calling to service on behalf of the city of Geneva. Sure. In 96, when I first took seat in January, I was, I was very intimidated. I was a, a young man. I had never been in politics before, and I, and I hate to use the word politics because it has a certain connotation sometimes. People call you a politician. I like to call myself a representative of the people. So that nervousness of the first sit down at the meeting and the first I or nay or whatever vote you were casting was a challenge for me to get comfortable with. And there, there is a, there's a learning curve. When you first walk into that position with the public in front of you, and now we're on TV, to be able to come to 
terms with that that comfort zone and knowing what you're doing and feeling comfortable with your votes and your opinions and your comments it took some time so during that first four years i got pretty comfortable with how the city council worked how the city government worked how the different departments worked so i was excited that i that i knew more about the city and i could add value and i and i actually gained a lot of speed in that first four years i wanted to leave a mark i wanted to to do something that I can feel comfortable, I can point back to saying I, I helped create those changes. And in that first four years, we made some pretty good decisions, pretty tough decisions. Uh, we brought Guardian Glass in here, which was a, was a huge accomplishment. We put a hotel on the lakefront. And I compliment the mayor and councils from the 80s who moved Route 5 and 20 that used to be right on the lakefront, moved it away from the lakefront to create more land and space for development. And at that point, there was also some challenges with finances back then we were a distressed city so it was a challenge for us to make decisions financially and we had to make some tough decisions that might not have been popular with certain groups but they were the benefit for the community to hold as the taxpayers so got my feet wet in those first four years when i came back into the fold i felt like it was riding a bike didn't miss a beat felt comfortable with it and i really had uh, stronger initiatives in my next subsequent terms to be able to make a mark and to leave more of an impression in the city that I love so much. And you bring up the, the key word, which is impression. And so being involved nearly in the city for 20 years, almost at that point, nearly 20 years, two decades, what do you think are some of the greatest accolades and accomplishments that you have achieved while in office? Um, as I mentioned, the, the Guardian Glass and the Ramada Inn, there's been a lot of developments that have taken place and relationships that have been developed throughout the, the time frame that I've been in, on council. And, and I don't want to take any credit on my own. This is not something that Steve Valentino did on his own. This is something that councils worked together with staff. And we had some great opportunities to work with some great staff members. So in, in the 20 years I've been there, um, I've, hired, I've, I've helped hire three city managers I've worked with uh, legal assistants, three different legal assistants. Um, we had different. We had lawyers at the time that were our legal assistants, and now we have a group that drives our legal assistants. So those were key factors in us developing the opportunities to kind of move the city forward. And we were always blamed for having plans. We would have consultants come in, and we we would do master plans. And everybody said, "Yeah, that's a great book that's on the shelf, but you didn't act on it." So I think some of the biggest things were we, we took a lakefront development plan that had seven phases, four of them are complete. We had a downtown revitalization plan, and that came into play, and now we have a comprehensive plan. So we're, we're reading the books, we're following those plans, we're, we're making the right moves. One of the biggest things was drawing private investment in along with public investment to kind of multiply that. And, and Gabe Brill, the, one of the biggest things that makes me happy is when, when I sit here and I have people that come back to Geneva that haven't been here for a while, and we have that wow factor where Geneva has changed and Geneva has evolved into the type of city, and I can talk more, more about that as we go along. Yeah, and I'd love to continue that conversation here. I wanted to ask you, where do you think we are in the city of Geneva? Where are we at in development, in your perspective, as the mayoral candidate on the Democratic Party? How do you feel the city is functioning currently? Is it up to your standards? Is it working for everyone in that sense? And if not, what are some of the issues that you see and important issues that you would like to address uh, if elected? That's, a, that's an interesting question, and, and I probably am slightly tainted on that because um, I come from a manufacturing background, and efficiency is key for me. Uh, I've been on value for the taxpayer dollar committees. Uh, I always talk about efficiencies because I think they're extremely important to provide that value for the taxpayer dollars. And, you know, I, I would love to say that the city is where it needs to be. Um, I think that the biggest thing for me is the city is heading in the right direction. And some people think that things are great. Some people think that there's a lot of opportunities for improvement. I agree with both of those comments. Uh, I think the city is great, but I think it's at a pinnacle point where we really need to keep challenging ourselves because if we sit back and relax on economic development or the downtown situation with storefronts, one of the key things that, that triggered downtown revitalization was we had private investment. And years ago, people used to try to make the money off of those old buildings in the storefronts and carry the building. 
uh, I can complement a variety of different private investors that come into our downtown and bought those buildings and decided that wasn't the way to make them work. They took the opportunity to develop the upstairs and make them really nice living spaces, and it drew people into the downtown for living. And, of course, that flips into those people are going to spend time and money in the downtown area and make the downtown vibrant. I think that was one of the key things for revitalizing our downtown. That and our historic reference. We have a beautiful Smith Opera House. We have some beautiful architecture and structures down there. So we can't sit back and relax. There's a lot of opportunity for development still in our downtown. And for challenges with staff and where we're headed, I think it's key that we have some great players in our staff relationships in order to retain those. And I'm talking department heads. I'm talking key employees. And I'm talking all the way down to every worker to make sure that they understand that the taxpayers really expect that their dollars are spent wisely and to, to retain those people and to pay them fair wages and give them fair benefits is always a challenge because you're juggling the finances of the city and trying to make everything as efficient as possible. And there's been perceptions in the past of what Geneva was and what Geneva might be right now. And I see the perception changing. And we get compared to the skinny atlases and the Canadagos of the world. But when it comes to our perception, there's still a lot of work left to do. And so I like that pivot point for you where you talk about perception because the name Geneva has changed many a meaning throughout its years. And so what do you think Geneva is today and what it means to you specifically as you're running for mayor in this election cycle? I'm excited about Geneva, and, and I've been labeled the guy with rose-colored glasses. Um, I might not be the, the person who is the most controversial by any means because I, I don't believe that that uh, confrontation leads you to um, success or leads you to coming up with a consensus with a group of people that work forward. You can't please everybody, and that's not going to happen, and I understand that. And that's kind of tough to sit in a mayoral seat and know that you're going to get bashed by certain groups or certain people, and you're going to get accolades by certain people. There's the, there's the vocal minorities. There's the silent majorities. And in all that political arena, you have to be steadfast about what you see in Geneva and where you want to take Geneva and where you want Geneva to go. So in that memorial seat, you really need to, to coach and guide and mentor the other new council people that come on board and try to get them comfortable with how to implement their visions and how not to stifle their comments and how to be open-minded enough to listen to them. Because at my age, I would think I know everything, but I know better than that. There's a lot of new technology out there. There's a lot of new opportunities out there. And I, I'm constantly the one that will say, I want to keep an open mind because I don't want to miss an opportunity. The The challenge for me, and as I look at Geneva's history, was Geneva was great when it was back in the 50s and 60s when the Seneca Army Depot was hopping. There's a lot of, there was a nucleus here that people would gravitate to from all over the place. And um, Geneva took a downfall in the 70s and 80s and had really had to work hard for that revitalization. And it wasn't until the last 10 or 15 years where we've actually turned that corner. We've, we've made strides and I compliment all the nonprofit organizations that we work with from the hospitals to the colleges to the school systems. Guardian Glass landed here in the 90s, and there was a lot of opportunities for Guardian to be anywhere else. But Guardian found a workforce, they found a public safety and a public um, uh, infrastructure that would support them. They also found uh, the community as far as the colleges, the school systems, the city school systems, and the, um, uh, the hospital to be a support for them to put millions of dollars into the community. And you touched also, again, on your position of leadership and having focus to guide the future of Geneva. And I think that's an important topic to rediscover in this sense, especially as you said that at most we'll have one incumbent uh, candidate return to their office as of November when the election cycle ends. And so for you as the leader of the Democratic slate, how confident do you feel about the candidates that you have across the city ward, but also the at-large counselors? I think one of our initial press releases kind of stated it the, the best. We have a diverse group, 
And that diverse group all has one thing in common. We want Geneva to be a better place to live, work, and play. So I need to be open-minded enough about all those diverse opinions and where everybody comes from on our slate. I don't think there's anybody on the Democratic slate that doesn't care about Geneva, that doesn't love Geneva. And I could even say the same thing for the Republican slate because I don't think anybody would be out there. This is a thankless job in many ways, but the gratitude that you get for moving the, the pendulum and making things work in the city of Geneva is key to the satisfaction. So the Democratic slate is, is poised. It has a variety of different people that come from different opinions and different backgrounds. And I look forward to being a 9-0 Democratic slate or whatever the turnout comes after November 5th. And so you brought up the Republicans, and this is a great pivot moment for us. I'd like to explore your relationship with your opposition for this election cycle, your good dear friend Mark Pitifer. And I was wondering if you can elaborate about your relationship with him and how that has factored into this race for you. Sure. Mark, uh, Mark's a great person. You know, I've known Mark my whole life. We graduated the class of 78. You know, the funny thing is everybody says, well, geez, no matter who wins, the class of 78 is well represented. <laughs> so the interesting part about me and Mark is, especially in our high school years, was Geneva High was right across the street from DeSales. So there was a lot of rivalry, but we learned to work past that rivalry. And when you go to 10 and 20 year reunions, you, you look across at everybody and you, you kind of lose that word, which school they graduated from. And in 1976, there was a Save Our School for DeSales. We almost closed. And some of, some of the people moved over to Geneva High, and it's tough for either one of us to remember exactly who graduated from what school. Mark's parents and my parents were close friends and my grandparents. So there's that that nucleus of that older Italian group that, that always stuck together and, and shared meals together. And so when I went into the service in 78 and went into the Army, I, I lost touch with the city for about three years. But as soon as I come back, it's like we didn't miss a beat. And when, <laughs> when I found out Mark was running for mayor, and I'm going to laugh about this, um, I kind of shook my head and said, geez, I wish I had an opponent that I didn't respect and love as much. <laughs> but um, it is what it is. And as Mark mentioned, Mark came to me and said, gee, Steve, why don't you stay in the third ward? I'd love to work with you. I'm going to run for mayor. And I said, Mark, great idea, too late. We're going to go head to head. And we're going to run a campaign. And we've both agreed on this, that this should be exemplary, not only for the city, the county, the state, but it should be for the nation. And we talk about party affiliations. I've, I've joked and called myself a Democrat. I'm a fiscally conservative Democrat. I'm a Democrat because my father was a Democrat. I believe in a lot of the, the ideals from both parties. And from and I believe there's going to be emergence of a third party that will come in the next 10 to 15 years. We'll see what happens. But for me and Mark's relationship, we want to set the stage that you can voice your opinion you can run for office. You don't have to have a, a large bank to do that. You have to be a good person and care and have the values that will move your city or your municipality forward. And I think that's something that you won't see common out, out in the political arena. And I'd like to talk about some of your policy perspectives in relation to Mark, and particularly around the lakefront. I know that that's a hot-button issue here in Geneva because of the Seneca Lake and how vital it is for our economic mobility here and vitality in Geneva. But I was wondering if you can elaborate on your position on the lakefront. Mark has discussed that he is interested in moving the railway storage area potentially to move in condominiums that would not obscure the lake view. So I was wondering if you could talk about what you believe we should do with the lakefront. Sure. I'm, I'm going to try to avoid um, Mark's opinion and focus on my opinion. I'm, I'm glad he's been, he must have been paying attention to council because we've been having these similar discussions, not exact by any means, similar discussions about the, the rail yard. So my opinion about the lakefront stems from an opportunity I was afforded back in 1998 when the, there was a Geneva's of the World Convention. And they invited everybody from the Genevas, and me and my wife went over with Dr. Marshall and his wife to Geneva, Switzerland. And we actually gave a presentation about Geneva, New York. We gave it in where they had peace talks, World War II peace talks. And just being in that facility was phenomenal to me. But through all the presentations of the 28 Genevas in the world, I came to a realization at the end of that 
that Gen our Geneva, New York is one of the most beautiful Genevas in the world. And it is because we haven't developed our lakefront. If you go to Geneva, Switzerland, you'll find that there's a lot of development right up to the waterfront. Um, they have the Jetu, which is the beautiful fountain, <laughs> which um, I applaud. And I'd love to kind of mimic that in some sort of way here. But besides that, Geneva, New York is a gem. And our, and our lakefront and our green space there is just what well, people come to love and they come to visit and they come to utilize. Uh, I'm an avid runner, swimmer, and biker. And I love when I go down to that lakefront and it's busy. And to me, that, that says that we're doing the right things. When you look across the street, there's a, a rail, rail yard over there, and that rail yard can be moved. There's one track that cannot be eliminated because that one track is a, an emergency track that goes down the lake, and it's um, federally mandated that that one track has to stay. But beyond that, if you look behind that, and this is maybe where I, I disagree with obscuring what's behind it, there's a neighborhood. It's Middle Street, it's Wadworth Street. It's, there, there's a whole neighborhood there that I think deserves the opportunity to have better access to the lakefront. There's a street, Preemption Street, that goes by the uh, suburban propane that can be extended across 5 and 20 to give easy access. I want to see those people who live in the 6th Ward, who live in those neighborhoods, not have to, to travel all the way around down to Lake Street to get to the lakefront. I want them to have better access there. And I think that affords them to improve their neighborhoods and, and their neighborhoods have become naturally more valuable because now they'll have better access and better lake view. And that accessibility, would that cross over 5 and 20 then? Or how would that work specifically with Wadsworth and that region in general? Yes, uh, Gabriel, that would have to cross over 5 and 20. There's no way around that. You know, we currently have a, a tunnel on this end. And people talk about years ago there was a catwalk over. Catwalks, unfortunately, they sound so good, but um, they don't they don't get utilized as much as they should, and there's a serious expense to them. So whatever the, the avenue is to cross 5 and 20 more conducively, with our $10 million revitalization fund, we're going to do it definitely right there in front of the city. Down further to the, uh, to the north, whether that still remains four lanes is yet to be determined, and I think that might be a phase two or phase three about lakefront access. And so... All mutual respect aside, why are you the best candidate for the city of Geneva for the mayoral position this election cycle? Well, thank you for the question. I think it would be egotistical for me to compare myself to Mark. I know Mark is a person. I think he cares about Geneva and he loves Geneva, and he has certain assets um, that he's acquired throughout his career. So I can't tell you what Mark is going to bring to the table for the mayoral position, only Mark can tell you that. I can tell you what I bring to the position. I've been in manufacturing for 37 years. I've held multiple positions from supervision to plant manager. I've dealt with profit and loss statements. I've dealt with personnel issues. I've done with restructuring, organization restructuring. I've had the opportunity to travel the world and see a lot of different communities and how they deal with their municipalities and how they deal with recycling and how they deal with the economic environment groups that they need to, to work with in order to be viable. I think there's a lot for us to learn if we reach out globally and understand that. So my expertise is, I used to think I was, I was great technically, but I found out I had great personal skills. And those personal skills allowed me to build teams. And I've built some great teams in my career. I worked at Zotus for 18 years, and then I worked at Courier Plastics for 16 years. And I've been with a global company, Thermo Fisher, for four years. And my ability to build those teams to make those companies successful has is, is been nothing short of something that I look back on in my career with, with fondness and with appreciation. And I'm, I'm very grateful for being afforded those opportunities to develop those skill sets and be able to apply them not only in my personal life, but my professional life and in my political life. Ultimately, for you... What is the greatest goal that you wish to achieve if elected on behalf of Geneva? I want to pass the baton to the next generation, and I want them to say, wow, you've given me something great to deal with. I'm going to preserve it. I'm going to make sure that I carry it on. I'm going to make it better. Um, I have two boys that are 32 and 34. I've got two grandchildren, um, one Autumn's 12, and my grandson is Anthony, and he's three. 
My girlfriend has triplets that are 12 that are going to be 13 in November. And I just want, I want them to appreciate Geneva, to want to live, work, and play here. And to be able to talk as, as they go through their life, to talk genuinely about how Geneva is and how they want to remain here and be part of the community in the future, as long as they can deal with the snowstorms. <laughs> In our closing moments, do you have any final comments that you wish to share with our listeners? Yeah, it's going to be a tough decision in November. I, I know there's there's people saying it's going to be a close race. I'm glad it's going to be a close race. You know, I appreciate the opportunity. Mark used to call me, but he still does. He calls me the honest politician because it was probably three or four terms ago. He asked me how I differed from my opponent. And I said, Mark, the third ward is going to be well represented regardless of which one of us gets voted in. And to me, that gave me a comfort level. And he labeled me the honest politician at that time. I don't like the politician label, but I took it at that time. <laughs> so for me, um, the, the, the constituents, the taxpayers, the voters out there, I, I'm just asking you to take a deep look at what the makeup of council could be whether it's going to be a 5-4 type council or a 9-0 type council, and what kind of leadership, if you need that experience in that leadership role, to carry the momentum of the city of Geneva forward. I compliment Mark and everything he does, but at this point in time and the pinnacle point we are in the city, I really think there's a level of experience that needs to kind of carry this on forward and carry this next council for the next four years to be able to keep the momentum going in the right direction. And not only keep it going in the right direction, but kind of pass the baton to the next generation. Steve, thank you for joining us today. And a special thanks to WEOS and WHWS station manager Greg Cotterell for sharing the Geneva Candidate Snapshot Series with FingerLakes1.com. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Gabriel. I'm Gabriel Petrazio with Finger Lakes One News. Thanks for listening to part one of this two-part episode of Inside the FLX. As always, if you enjoy the program, we ask that you leave us a review on iTunes. It helps new listeners find the show. Until next time, stay informed and keep listening to Inside the FLX.